Thursday. Yay. Woo, woo. <laughs> woo. Well, some people call it the eve of the weekend. Yes, it is. Do you have that mindset? Yeah, I like do. Like, you're, you're waiting from for the weekend Wednesday, so much. From Wednesday, believe me. No. Wednesday is the eve of the eve of the weekend. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, you're calculating it from there. Okay. Well, anyways, <laughs> it's yeah. Thursday. Welcome. It's another day to live life as it comes to us in various forms. Definitely. Despite the struggles, hustles, bustles, and issues you're faced with daily, make it a habit to always take care of yourself. You're important. Yeah, hey, you, tell you, them. Me, tell you them. matter. Tell them. You know, you are, I don't want to say the most important person because you have to learn to be selfless, but at the same time, there has to be a balance. Selfishness and selflessness. Yeah, selflessness. You have to just find the balance. Well, it's not just only motivation, but it's going to be a wonderful show this morning. Definitely. Confuse them. Confuse <laughs> us, Mike. Confuse us. You know what happens here? <laughs> I've seen, I've thought about that thing before. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm driving and then, ah, man, what if this guy behind me wants to kidnap me? Yeah. I'll traffic right. it as if I'm going left. Left side, you do right. right. <laughs> Mike, are you not paranoid? <laughs> Anyways, see well, um, it's a beautiful morning. It's great to be here. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And uh, thank you for joining and tuning into your number one breakfast show on television. Definitely. Don't change that dial because we have so much coming up right here for you. My name is Winfrey Agbodeshe. Mike Mesikeno is mine. You can catch the show. It's live on GoTV, yeah. channel 16. And then on the ultra high frequency, that's the terrestrial band, it's channel 49. No, of course. And you can also download our app or watch us live, which, of course, at um, tvcentertainment.tv mm. and on YouTube, YouTube Facebook definitely. at TVC Connect. And definitely. download the app on mm. the Android and iOS stores. Yeah. On the go access. Yeah. So, Daniel, sorry, was it? Oh, May 1st, Walker's Day, you were like, uh. <laughs> He said I was like, hey, hey, I was working. I, working. I, 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 I saw the Any flyer and the flyer said, um, uh, uh, me, I was broadcast journalist. Like, mm -hmm. you were two in one, you're not only one. Yes, no, it was no, journalist. No. And I was like, yeah, journalist. I was very proud of you. It was very good. <laughs> Where was that? You, you that was actually Unilag. It was okay. actually Unilag. It was actually, uh, it was a conference and Great Life Conference. And of course, um, a book launch, right? Simplifying your life and all that. It was an oh, amazing one. Today's really book chats. I'm yes. sure you are definitely one to talk about <laughs> because you read out a book launch, yeah? Okay, let's get to tell you what we have on the show yes. today, this morning mm -hmm. for you. We love celebrating artworks. And of course, that's what we do at it. Thursday. Now, for our art display this morning, we have hyper realist artist who uses paper and different grades of charcoal to make her art. And then uh, we have a Nigerian American fusion. Uh, uh, we have Becky in the house today. We'll be going to be talking to her. She's going to be our final guest. Mm, thirsty mm -hmm. and uh, time for art. And yeah, so it was a book launch, yeah. Yes. And uh, I saw some notable dignitaries there. You, you, were, yeah. you were dashing and all of Thank that. Like, you. Ah, Thank you. You tell us about it. Let's come on. <laughs> Let's come on. Yeah. To be honest, yeah. see, you know, there's some events that you plan up for pay. Mm. It's not like I wasn't prepared okay. for this particular one. For some weird reason, I wasn't feeling too well. Yeah. So it was actually half and half. I was thinking, should I call the super and cancel? But I'm like, nah, oh. I cannot do that. Do you understand? Oh. I'm like, you know what? No matter what, I'm just going to go there. And uh, this thing. But I'm like, no matter what, I'm going to pull through. And it was actually amazing. All oh, right. Really uh, amazing. We'll talk more about that and get to see the highlights of the event. Let's take a look at what the day's weather will be like. And then, of course, the news will follow after that. The news on Wake Up Nigeria. My name is Mike. Messi Keno. President elect Ashiwa Jubola Tinubu says River State Governor Onye Sonwike was instrumental to the victory of the APC in the presidential election. He reflected on the concluded election in Potakat where he's visiting to inaugurate some state government projects. The president elect is on a two day walking visit to River State. His mission is to inaugurate the 12th flyover constructed by the Yesonwike administration. But the president-elect took some time to acknowledge the role that Governor Wike played in securing victory for the APC in what was described as a fiercely contested presidential election. I am a very happy man. Happy because I went through a gruesome campaign, fought hard, beat myself, Supported by many of you, and I won. Fair and square. Ism, I say thank you for your contribution to my future. 
Your Excellency. The former Lagos governor commended Governor Wike for standing firm on his conviction and that I it was time for a southern president to emerge. In His Excellency, I see a man of principle. He took a principled stand that the presidency must return to south. And he has the courage to stand by his conviction, not minding whose ox is gone. Our visioner, the governor. Governor Wike chose not to talk politics this time. Instead, he made a demand for refund of money spent by the states for projects on federal government roads. If we have saved because they are federal government roads and we don't do it, who are those to suffer? It's not we, it's not reverse people. So since we have said, look, we don't want our people to suffer. I also believe federal government should say, look, you've done well for us. This is our project we should be doing. Can you bring your deal? Let us refund you the money you have done this road. The president-elect will end his visit to River State with the inauguration of the newly constructed magistrate court building on Thursday. Uche Okoro, TVC News, Port Hackett. There are foreign stories. At least eight students and a security guard are dead after a shooting at a school in Serbia's capital, Belgrade. Another six pupils and a teacher were injured in the attack and have been taken to hospital, the Interior Ministry said in a statement. Police arrested a 13-year-old student at Vladislav Ribikina Primary School in central Belgrade over Wednesday morning's attack. It is the first shooting of its kind in Serbia. The education minister said officers in helmets and bulletproof vests cordoned off the area around the school located in the central Vraka neighborhood shortly after 8.40. Officials told reporters at a news conference in Belgrade that the suspect had called police himself after the attack. Mm, all right, great to have you. MM, you're welcome. Thank you. Welcome, great to have you. Oh, so, yeah, uh, I saw something quite interesting yesterday on social media. Um, social media has been a, quite a very good tool when for correcting some ills of society. Mm -hmm. I tell you that society, uh, social media in itself doesn't have any innate quality. It's like a blank page, like a mirror. Mm -hmm. What you throw in is what you throw out. So when you say, when you say, oh, it's toxic and all of that, I think that it's about who you follow, what is on your feed. Uh, it's uh, at the same place where you see that toxicity. Some other people see inspiration, mm -hmm. maybe see motivation, see yeah. love. So, you know, it's see just, see money, it's just a blank. For me, it's just blank, mm -hmm. you know, and whatever hitting is what you hit out. So as much as it's been used, we know that a number of people also still put out a lot of funny details. Before I go to what, <laughs> let me tell you something. Before I go to what I want to talk about today, let me tell you something. Somebody put out a video. I know this person. This person put out a video of, Oh, God, I won't tell you exactly, because you know the best. You know, put out a video of something that happened and said, oh, this, this happened, I was scammed. Oh, oh, my family did this, my family, I've been away for this, 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 da, 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 da. This person, I've known that this person has been in Nigeria for over 15 years. <laughs> like, no, and then people just cry the story, oh, family, family can be evil. I did not say family cannot be evil, because some people have wish in their family, we know. But this was a lie. Exactly. And the person was, the person was just need to gain clout. And I knew that, I know, you don't just come back, you, you understand? Because I knew the best person and I was like, I saw the reaction, I saw everybody was like, oh, family, family. But this was a lie. This actually reminds me of the conversation I was having with someone yesterday. And she outrightly said, people lie on social media. Mm. And to be honest, I had, initially when she said it, it actually hit me, I'm like, oh, okay, how do you mean? By the time she started explaining, I now understood that people actually lie. Exactly, and there's some, especially on TikTok, there's a content creator, when there's some things that happen, they just bring out a scenario. <laughs> well, so but this one, I, I think many, many of you might have seen the video where a uh, uh, lady was calling out the vice president's daughter, as it were. Mm -hmm. You don't know what happened about how she had worked for one month mm -hmm. and she had not been paid what she was, in quotes, due. And then from, from the way she sounded, it seemed like she didn't even negotiate wasn't any doing pay. And, and she was expensive. And all, you, you, all through her, her video, you could hear things like, oh, I was expecting that this is the vice president's daughter. Maybe I could get something like, oh, some good money. And at the end of the month, nothing. <laughs> and I was given 15K for my transport for working 31 days. You didn't work. You don't, nobody works 31 days in a month. I mean, how? <laughs> and which month was it? Mike, stop it. You but yeah, but you get. But the point is, 
she mm -hmm. went in there maybe without negotiating with that entitlement and all that. Does anybody do that? You go to an interview or is that even sensible? Does that even make sense? Putting all of that together. Are they being entitled and all of that? Does that, does that even make any sense in any way? I'll say, first of all, right? I think the process of, I was actually, I've seen several videos of people actually talking about how when you're recruiting, especially as an entrepreneur or whatever, make sure you go through the right processes mm. of interviewing people. To me, it's coming off as if, okay, obviously, I don't think a proper process was of employment was actually followed. Mm. It's a situation of, okay, I, have someone, I need someone to do this job. Oh, yeah, who do you know? Who do you know? So, so I know this person. Oh, yeah, come. Oh, person, you jump. Of course, see, the truth is, see, even as entrepreneurs, right, when someone calls you to do a job, you, if you hear of the person's name, he's actually a notable person. You expect more mm. in the society that we're in. That's how things actually happen. So I'm sure she was excited at the fact that, ah, Vice President's daughter, let her be doing the work. I ah, know, bad as bad. As she said now, did you say 150K or 15K? I said 150K. But then again, I think what struck me in the video was the fact that she actually said, the Vice President's daughter told her that, she, you know your job is based on commission, mm. right? And mm. now, Okay, I will just give you 15k to sort out your transportation. To me, that came across as probably they had, yeah, a verbal conversation. Yeah. And they prior to, to that do, time. Prior to that, and she was meant to do a job that was actually she was meant to get commissioned for and all of that. So what it says is that for that month, she obviously didn't deliver on that, so she, mm. didn't, she wasn't entitled to any commission. And then you're expecting like a basic salary because every she kept on saying everybody had been paid, everybody had been paid. Mm. And stuff like that. And then, but then again, what is important here is when you're going to a contract to work for someone, please let the terms be clear. Mm -hmm. Have a contract, all of you should sign, right? If you don't agree with it, you rest. Mm. So that's it, avoids problems. Like I think that. that's the issue. Be sure. I mean, I mean, yeah. you've done, I mean, you've consulted and all that. I, imagine going into a con your consulting room and they tell them, okay, I don't know if you need to work with we'll There agree. was a lack of communication here, mm. you know, look and, looking at the scenario. Because there was something she said that sort of struck with me, and is she said she was paid that amount for mm. lack of performance. Oh, she said that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> lack of performance. That means she did not Deliver. meet up mm -hmm. to expectations, expectations. Mm. and that was why she was given that amount of money. And if every other person isn't complaining, that means every other person delivered on the job that they were supposed mm. to do effectively mm. and they were compensated or they were paid accordingly. But mm. she, um, she didn't meet up. She flouted on whatever agreements that was, you know, made mm. from the inception. Mm. Hence, you know, the, 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 the monies she got. But what... Now, the, the question is, why coming on social media to cry foul? <laughs> is she trying to get attention from the vice president's daughter or trying to get um, attention from the public yeah. or trying to paint the vice president's daughter in a bad light? First of what all, her, her exactly. true intentions? intentions are? That's what they are now. But first of Everything all, combined. I think the vice president has two daughters, mm -hmm. eh? Which one? <laughs> Why didn't you just call the name first of all? Because so what, what, sure. what she was trying to do here yeah. was trying to, yeah. you know, sort of, um, 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 sort of taint the vice president's yeah, yeah, rep yeah. daughter's yeah. reputation yeah, yeah. with this story, with, the, with her coming out on social media, because she could have easy, easily gone to the person or whatever. She could have had this conversation with the vice president's daughter, mm. and it could have been settled amicably. Not mm. coming on social media and crying for, am I going to be the one to not pay her for the monies that she was supposed to be paid for the job that she did not do well? She was now saying that she wanted to report, she, that it was any other person she could have reported to the police. Mm. But if Vice President Doctor, how can she report to the police? What will be done? Now, she thing, also like, needs to properly just, even evaluate, sit down and properly evaluate the job that she did and ask herself mm. critically, did I do this job well? to mm. have been paid the amount that I am expected to be to paid. Do. And, and when I heard something about commission, my, my, my thoughts came that this is, a vice president's daughter is not an official position. You understand? She probably has a business where- Yeah, of course, like that a has personal to deal thing. With, it's not like, yeah. Yes, that has to deal with um, getting jobs and getting a commission, or getting paid mm. and getting yeah, a so, that's the thing. so that definitely means like it's a personal business. So I don't think the issue of the person's Parentage should be called into that question as at that particular point. Of in time. course, that's so, so I think it's the same so, thing MM said. What exactly yeah, is she looking for? Exactly. So, of course, trying to change her image and so, she's also trying to get uh -huh. sympathy from the crowd. And I think um, employers do this as well. Uh -huh. When they want to employ like marketers, for instance, mm. and they know that marketing is something that you have to deliver, it's a delivery oriented job. Do you understand? Mm. They don't want to just pay you salary every month when you're not doing anything. So they tell you go out, whatever you bring in, 
we'll give you a commission from that. So from the sense of it, I think that was probably one of the, um, what the agreement was like. Mm. It was meant to be paid from what she brings in, and she didn't bring anything in. She even tried, she gave you 50k for transport. Yeah, Still talking about social media. Yeah. There was a girl that was recently called out on mm. Twitter. Mm. So this girl, I don't know in what capacity or what role she played at the UN. She was in the UN. At the UN? At the UN hall, okay. right? Then she does a video. Okay. And then in her tweet, she tweeted, um, I was called, uh, called in a hurry to make a speech. That's why I am so nervous. Huh? And in the background, it was an empty hall. You can hear her voice echoing. Okay. So she did two different videos. Okay. And it was, the video was like, the camera was somewhere situated here where she was nervously asking her question. And then people came at her. Okay. First off, if you were to give a speech at the UN, you wouldn't be called abruptly. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it was a UN... This, these are people's comments, so not okay. me saying it, so, because, like I said, she was called out. Oh, it's she's actually really... Tre she's tre actually trending right now on social media because they were like... It, it, in all, it was a facade. Mm. And I see what she was trying to do. Mm. She is a climate, climate change advocate, advocate right? Okay. For whatever reason, she was at the UN, was personal to her. But then she decided to use that opportunity to what? You know, sell her markets. Sell her market, mm -hmm. chase some clouds. You know, oh, just oh, change. Oh, it's a fake oh. it till you make it oh. industry or world, oh. actually. I, I, I mean, I was just called so now. Exactly. In the conference, at, a, a, over, exactly. And people left the hall. Why people like this? Now? People should try to put this in perspective. <laughs> <laughs> like we said, so she made it seem like she was called, you know, um, um, impromptu, impromptu mm -hmm. to just make a speech mm -hmm. or to just say something. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, she and then she was holding her phone while she was, you know, making her speech. Obviously, according to her, she was nervous and all of that. And every people mm -hmm. told that video mm -hmm. apart, mm -hmm. you see, critically yeah. analyzed everything yeah. that could mm -hmm. possibly that could happen yeah. at, a, at, a, at a usual UN, UN general, general meeting. Council. You know, all of it. I just want to mention that there is that pressure when you look at your phone. I have not posted in one you know. month. Hey, God, what do I post that will make, that will make, yeah, that will gain that will make you know, get some, <laughs> I need to move and all that. Simply content creators, there's one guy, I don't know whether he's a friend, I went to MM school, that guy, <laughs> went to UK, that talk, oh, I went to, oh, 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 I go to church today, they go give me food, make I go, oh, 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 God. Not only you, they go, they get story like that. Story, story, tell story, story. You, know, you, you want to create content. You now, you now go back, give us Zobo, Dodo, all join. Anyways, be careful what you actually <laughs> see on social media and what you believe from social media. At this point, send in your comments. Let us know exactly what you think about these topics. We definitely want to hear from you. We're going to quick break right now. When we come back, so much more to come right here. We come back here. All right, welcome. It's a time to take a look at some headlines in the, the papers today. We have our a review expert here, social mm -hmm. commentator, Prince Francis Chilaka. It's great to have you, sir. Thank you're, you very much. Morning. I like the bed when I grow up. <laughs> you already have it. No, no, why? The color, the way it's, it's coming, white. it's coming, it's coming. See, it's coming. <laughs> great to have you, sir. You're welcome. You, right. But let's take a look at some of the headlines this morning. And this one really uh, gets to me, the Nation paper. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have here... I won't marginalize any part of Nigeria tunable pledges. This is why it's quite interesting. Yesterday, he, has been, um, he was in River State, mm -hmm. and we saw an opposition governor mm -hmm. roll out the red carpet mm -hmm. for the president-elect, who's from an opposition party. party and yeah. the party of the president-elect, or some officials, distanced themselves from, that. from what was happening. It was intriguing when, when I saw a, a statement attributed to some officials of the APC in the South South saying that, oh, they are not with WK on this one, no. You understand? Mm -hmm. It was quite, you know, the whole, the whole play and everything that's happening there. And then, of course, we heard the speeches from uh, the president-elect and also the governor of River State and all that. Quite uh, some drama happening mm -hmm. in River State, you know. Let's, let's talk about that. Why would, why would that kind of situation, you know, come up in such a way that the APC mm -hmm. would distance themselves away from mm -hmm. the president-elect? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Nigerian politicians are very funny. Um, I've always maintained that whatever politicians do, it's not about the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's about their individual selfish interests. Um, so each time they talk, um, you, you probably assume it's, they're talking about Nigerians, the masses, mm. the suffering Nigerians. No, they're not. Mm. It's just about themselves. Mm -hmm. And you know, knowing Wike for who he is, um, he, he's, a, he's a man filled with so much drama. He enjoys drama. 
He does. Yes, he enjoys it. So he, he lives in it. He drinks it. He sleeps with it. So for him, it was. It's, it's like he is trying to score a political point. Mm -hmm. He is trying to remain relevant even after he leaves um, office. Office. So that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you, you, we need to. I, I believe that we need to um, look at politics in Nigeria beyond party affiliation. And that's the only way this country can move forward. You know, you don't say because you belong to APC mm. and APC is doing something wrong and you're saying that thing is what should be done. You know? No. Mm. And then you belong to PDP and PDP is doing something wrong. You're saying it's my party member. No. Mm. We should move beyond that. We should Which is what uh, Governor Wiki said. He said something mm -hmm. that uh, the elections have ended. Yes. Let us not politic, let us govern, which yes. I would give him kudos for. Because yeah, but, but, if we had that mindset mm -hmm. and we were honestly, uh, you know, putting out those values, we had that mindset honestly that, okay, look, election is done, politicking is done, now it's time Let's for come governance. Together and govern, yeah. Yeah, but you know, you know, people don't take wicked seriously anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's just it. I was, I was, I was surprised that yesterday I didn't see the band behind. You know, <laughs> people don't take him seriously anymore. Because if someone else, someone else has said that, mm -hmm. and in a different forum, mm. people will believe what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, what's so special about you have less than how many days to go? To go. And you're, first of all, you declare the public holiday. Ah. You shut down the economic, the, the economic yes, of life the of a state. Because you want to uh, commission a project. When will we as Nigerians stop that mindset? Mm -hmm. You use taxpayers' money to build a house, to build a bridge, mm -hmm. and you still punish the same taxpayers. You force them to come out for you to launch it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is what I don't understand about Nigerian mm. politics. politics. For me, I would, have, I would have thought that the incoming president would have said, no, don't shut down the economic life mm. of the state. Let us come and do this thing quietly, no noise, no funfare, and move on. And move mm -hmm. on. That's right. what governors mm -hmm. would be like. We'll do. All right. So let's move on to the punch now. Yes, uh, Winfrey, you have yes. something here. Uh, of course. So I have something here on the, on the major headline here on the punch. It says, outrage as Senate approves Buhari's 22.7 trillion naira extra budgetary spending. Oh, now we're seeing, uh, we're seeing a transition <laughs> right? in a few days. I mean, like 26 days to go. And then we we'll definitely be seeing a new government coming. And then 22, this really takes our debt to 69 trillion naira. Now, what are your thoughts? It's on not this much. It's not uh, much. Yeah, it's not much. Okay. <laughs> because I mean, from what I, I hear from the CBN and all of mm. that, it's going to take us forty years to pay back. Mm. And most of those who have collected this loan, mm -hmm. most of those who have utilized this loan would have gone by then. Mm. Yes. It's the truth. Yes. yes. Course, now yes. you see the thing is, we need to ask ourselves questions, and I keep saying the same thing. When will the Nigerian politicians learn to understand that? Governance is not about them. It's about the Nigerian people. Over years, we've had leaders in Nigeria yeah. who do not ask Nigerians, what do you want? Mm. They always give Nigerians what they think Nigerians want. It is wrong. Mm. And, you know, I mean, for me, the, the, the term, is it the Ninth Senate? Mm. As yeah, as the concerned, Ninth one, yes. As far as I'm concerned, those, 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 they, they, didn't, they, didn't even, they, don't, they don't even know what they're doing. Mm. Let's put it that way. If you remember, when the Senate was um, inaugurated in the first start, they said, whatever Mr. President brings, we will approve. But it doesn't make sense. This is a government that is winding up. At this point in time, this government should not even be thinking about spending. This government should be consolidating to say, okay, this is our track record. This is what we've done. This is what is outstanding. Mm. This is our handover. They should be preparing a handover note. Mm. But you know... You know, Nigeria, yeah. Nigeria is a country where um, it's unfortunate that <laughs> we've never had leaders. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have right. only had rulers. All right. Still, still on the story, The Guardian, the headline there, uh, we can see <laughs> Nigeria to spend 40 years, like we said, repaying controversial 23.72 trillion CBN overdrafts to the federal government. And it's still about the same thing. We can see uh, the, 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 the Senate, the Senate president there, mm -hmm. like we can see there, and all that. Um, then let's see what, uh, what is quite different there um, hmm, on The Guardian. OK, all right. Mm, OK, let me see. Let me see some corrupt officials sabotaging passport issuance, Arik Beshola mm -hmm. alleges. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had issues with this, with, uh, with we know, I don't, I don't know exactly <coughs> where this was coming from, but you know, we know with passports, that's the, that has been on from, mm -hmm. from those in diaspora trying to get 
passports mm -hmm. or trying to renew their yeah. passports. And then you hear things about paper uh, not, not being available, mm -hmm. with the printing and all of that not being available. These are things that normally you don't need to see somebody. With the, with the advance in technology, one should be able to, the same way you can go maybe pick an ATM card, you already have your details. Biometrics mm -hmm. are there. A lot of things are all over. Yeah. You know, when would we get things right? In, 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 <laughs> I mean, you know, you're asking a question I can't really answer when we're going to get things mm. right in this country. Um, I, I have one, I'm one of those who have suffered getting passport. When I needed to get passport last year for my kids, um, we spent, it took us almost a year to get the passport. Mm. We were made to pay, as in the amount of money I paid, I was like asking myself, you know, what is wrong? Mm -hmm. the, the, the thing is this, you know, the government has not been sincere to the Nigerian people mm -hmm. when it comes to this issue of passport. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this is with all sense of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Come out and tell Nigerians, your passport is 10,000 Naira. Mm -hmm. Let us do everything online, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. including the biometrics. Mm -hmm. Do everything online. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go to, for instance, you go to a bank now to get your ATM card. You don't need to talk to anybody. You need to. You just punch the thing, and the thing prints it on its own. It's not that we can't do it. It's just the corrupt nature exactly. of Nigerians. Exactly. The corruption has eaten so deep, it's like a cancer. And you can't treat it from the, the surface. surface. Yes, you have to go down. This is not the first time Adegbe Shola is talking about passport. Mm -hmm. This is not the second time he's talking about passport. What has he done? When you keep telling Nigerians, oh, people are sabotaging, who are these people sabotaging? Mm -hmm. Are these people sabotaging more um, powerful than government? Mm -hmm. Because when government wants to go and demolish your property, they don't wait. They don't wait for procedure. They just come there and break it down. Yes. So why is it that they've not been able to curb the corruption in the system? It simply means that it is filtering down everybody mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from immigration to pass issuing officer to every even at the man at the gate mm -hmm. is also corrupt. Mm -hmm. and he also That's our problem. Yes. So <laughs> it's, 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 it's corruption. Yes. The corruption is endemic. endemic. So government needs to be able to say, we want, you see, you can only stop corruption if you're corruption free yourself. Interesting. So it's, it's not like. It's not like the government does not know what to do mm -hmm. to curb this menace. The government knows, they know but they don't do. have the political way to, yeah, do, it. to do it. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. I mean, it's, it's always a pleasure to have, um, having you here to um, go through these um, headlines with us, but we have to go now. And uh, we definitely have something cooking in the kitchen. And uh, so, I mean, what's happening there? Welcome to the kitchen, guys. With me is Chef Belinda. And this morning, we are making bitter leaf sauce with boiled yam and plantain. This is a very healthy recipe for those who are on a feed farm journey. And, right? You know what, Chef Belinda? Please, let's talk about the ingredients for our recipe. Okay. <laughs> So today we're making um, chicken and fish in bitter leaf sauce. And for our recipe, we have um, chicken shredded and fish, smoked fish. Then we have tomatoes. Of course, when you hear sauce, tomatoes will come in. Then the bitter leaf. This has been washed and boiled a little. Then crayfish, palm oil, yam, plantain, seasoning, salt, onions, and pepper. Right. So we're going to play local league today and digging it out in the locals. You know what? I am <laughs> so <laughs> stoked about this morning's recipe. I won't even lie to you because first off, I love plantains and then bitter leaves. So it took me a while to actually really appreciate bitter leaf. Oh. And even though it is actually very, very rich in a lot of nutrients that are very, very healthy, healthy and beneficial yes. to our health. Yes, yes. It took me a while because of its bitter taste. And then eventually, I learned how to wash, wash it yes, properly. Yes. But, you know, um, at the end of the day, we still, you know, get the best out of, of our bitter leaf. Bitter right. leaf yes. So um, what are we starting with? So we are going to boil the yam first. When the yam boils up, then we'll add the plantain. Okay. So while that is boiling, we'll do some of... Miss and is almost halfway now, so you don't have much work today. Okay. But the only job we have now... To? You mm. now, yes now. Please, I'm not feeling well. <laughs> don't stress me. So the only job you have now is to just cut these tomatoes in uh, what cuts now? Let's say medium dice. Maybe cut one into four or six. Then this tatashe, 
We'll run it as well. Huh? That's the only job for today. I try now. I know to give you work now, play day. <laughs> okay. I think I'm good. <laughs> and your nails, you don't have sharp nails today, so you are good to go. Chef Belly, In fact, you are kitchen ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right now we are putting, we are going to start boiling our yams and yes. then pouring the plant. I know we are boiling in But the, hey, we are, we are going to come thing. back very, very shortly. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. And it's time to take a look at some artworks this morning. And for our art display, we have a hyper-realist artist who uses paper and different grades of charcoal to make her art. Atinuke, popularly known as CC Painter, is here with us. It's great to have you. You're welcome, Atinuke. Good morning. CC Painter. <laughs> well, I, I, like, I, like, I like the sobriquet, by the way. But um, what is hyperrealism let's let's start with that because maybe some people might need to understand what that okay, term first, really means um before hyperrealism there's realism okay 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 realism is um um me trying to portray someone on paper just exactly how the picture comes mm. now hyperrealism is going a step further okay. to draw your paws the every O's on your face and so everything. it's more detailed than more realism, detailed. Yes. right? Yes. Okay, and then how did you get into this particular? It seems it's, it's your favorite style of art. Yeah. Here. Why did you decide to go to 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 go into hyper realism? I'm just um, intrigued by how well detailed it is. Like okay. it takes a lot of patience, it a does. lot of mental, like. You have to be there. So right? people, I've seen a lot. We've seen a lot of hyper-realistic drawings, and both think that they are photographs. You know, yeah. at times it's even hard to differentiate because yes. they are so. Well, do you think that can cause a problem to really knowing which one is art? Because we've seen some people who, who would, you know, at times it's hard to differentiate. I've seen yeah. some that you know, like maybe my see tears falling down, and it looks yeah. like you just, you know, does that cause a problem at times? It always does. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes when I'm true with my drawings. I put them side by side with the picture, mm. and then I tell people to tell me which is the art and which is the picture, mm. and a lot of people can't. Mm. All right, so now, th these ones you have here now, they are in black and white, yeah? yes? But Okay, so these are the hyper-realist realist image in black and white, but you could also do them in color. Why do you I prefer, can. you focus more, it's like you focus more on charcoal, black yes, and white. Yes, yes. Why so? Uh, because color is a bit messy for me. Okay. Um, um, I'm kind of bland in my style. Okay. Like I just, even the painting in my house is white everywhere. Like I don't like colors mm. that much. And you're wearing a red, it's, oh, quite, yeah. wearing, it's quite colorful. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting that you come in monochrome, black and white. But no. you're, wearing, you're in red, you're looking very colorful. So <laughs> I don't know, how, how, how is it so that, um, that your outlook that you see that you don't like colors? How is it so? Okay, um, when I was younger, I started realizing that colors affect me. Like, hmm. too much colors affect okay. my mood. Okay. Like, I could get into a room and it's painted orange and I'm feeling down. Hmm. Yes. So, I started realizing how white um, relates more with me. Okay. Or black. Just something very plain. plain. No dramas and hmm. all of that, yeah. Hmm. Quite interesting, yeah? So let's, this one is beautiful. Let's talk about this particular painting, or the, the one we just saw, there, that lady with the beads and all of that. Okay. How long did it take you to it, put together, to commission to put that project? Um, it depends on the size. Okay. And how well detailed is it, is. it is. Like this Bob Marley painting, for instance, mm. and this one, it, it can take as much as two months. Two months? Yes. How many hours a day working for you for these two months? <laughs> Sometimes you can go 16 hours. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. 16 hours? Yes. In a day? Sometimes more. You yeah, got 24 hours in a day. Are you sure? <laughs> sometimes more. Like, so, sometimes I walk all through the day. I rest around the night and then go back to work midnight. Mm. And maybe have two, three hours of sleep and start again. This seems like it's more than just a profession for you. Yes. What does art do to you as a person? Okay, um, I went into it for survival, basically. Mm. Mm. But after a while, it became my person because I am I'm more introverted. Okay. So it kind of suited me more. Yeah. Because I work from home. I don't have to see people. I don't have to go out. So 
it became like like part of my life. I can know? understand. So yeah. So much so that even if you're not making money from it, you will still do it. I would. Oh, wonderful. Now let's talk about the making money part, art <laughs> affairs and all of that. You know, um, the appreciation of art we know that is not. It differs in different places. Yeah. Let's. I, I. I. want to hear your own take on the appreciation of art in Nigeria, Nigeria. as it is. Okay. Before I started art, mm. I used to think that it's not lucrative. Okay. I used to think that who in Nigeria would pay so so amount for, you know, just something on paper or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But when I started, I realized that there are quite a number of people who just want to see themselves repainted mm. or redrawn or mm. something. I myself, I'm not fascinated by seeing yourself. By yeah. seeing myself. I'm, so I, in five I mean, years, I've never drawn myself. Look, man, we'll pick up here. <laughs> I, I saw, I, I, there's this particular person I know, and they wake up, there's one big one here. Yeah. Themselves. They turn here, another big one. <laughs> I, 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 I cre if I see myself, I wake up and see myself in the morning, I think I would, I would go back, I would pass out, like I know. I know so funny for different like strokes or different I've folks. I've done about 14, 16 art for a single person. Oh, wow. Yes, so I know people that want to see themselves everywhere, but I'm not fascinated by that. I don't mm. have a single portrait of myself in the house or mm. anything. So, um, but art is actually lucrative in Nigeria. Mm. And luckily for us, we have social media now. We don't have to, they don't, they don't have to pass through your shop or something to see you. Mm. They can just see you online. Mm. So you can actually sell across um, um, the world mm. just by doing mm. your stuff in your studio. Now, something I have seen is that a lot of um, artists who yeah. draw tend to gravitate towards graphic design. You know, on Ooh. the computer. Yes, I know. Like, so they go into graphic design. I know. I, I give, Artists who draw. Yeah, who draw. Yeah, you see some. I, I, so I've had a lot of them maybe in secondary school when they were growing up. And they actually okay. were quite good. But then they, they gravitated towards graphics, you know, making graphics. Because, you know, like you said, some people had that mentality that it was not, it was not lucrative enough. And yeah. they just try into graphics and all of that. Have you, have you ever tried anything graphics design? Have you ever no. meddled into it? Would you ever? No. You don't think so? So no. it's always the going to be... The only other thing I would try mm. is um, painting okay. with colors. I would try to overcome that fear of colors. I would, I would love to have <laughs> you at that time when you overcome it. And maybe tell us your story then. Okay. Because that would be something to listen to. Well, meanwhile, you, you're, good in color. you're looking good in color. So maybe, yes, you should really take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you so much, C.C. Painter. It was a pleasure having you. You're, you're welcome. You. All right. Let's head over to the kitchen, of course, and see how far they are going with breakfast this morning. I do not remember the last time I actually chopped tomatoes with my hands. And Chef Belinda is making me do this work this morning. I'm not finding it funny with you, by the way. Sorry, sorry, so sorry. But you did well now. So look at how pretty they are looking. Oh, thank you, you know. so much. You guys, welcome to the kitchen, guys. With me is Chef Belinda, and we are making, or oh, well, she is. I'm just assisting. It's we now. We oh, are we, now. We didn't make our <laughs> Correct. Right, so we're making um, bitter leaf sauce with bold plantains and yam. L I know, it looks yeah. nice, Abby. It's, 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 it sounds nice. Yeah. On your screen right there are the ingredients. Chef Belinda, please run through the ingredients once again. Okay. And uh, let's go. Okay, so we have our yam that's already boiling here. Okay. We have a plantain, tomatoes, finely chopped. Finely chopped. Yeah. Emphasis <laughs> on finely chopped, guys. Then we have our tatashe chopped. Then the bitter leaf, of course, that has been um, washed and parboiled a little. Then crayfish, palm oil, pepper, onions, seasoning, and salt. Mm. So not so many ingredients, but a very healthy dish. I mean, for those of you who are on a healthy journey, this is a great alternative. You have so many nutrients in our, you know, um, tomatoes. Um, I, the tomatoes is very good for the hearts, guys. Um, so it also has what flavonoids that are very, very good for the heart. And then you have our boiled potatoes, which of course you could also alternate for on ripe. Plantains. Yeah, these are semi-ripe plantains. They are semi -ripe not semi-ripe plantains. Yes. Okay, so they're not entirely they're very not entirely ripe. ripe yes. Okay, so now that we have our yam boiling, what's next? Okay, we have our um, tomato and pepper chopped. So mm. there's a pan on fire now. We okay. put our oil. 
Our palm oil. Yes, the palm okay. oil. We're not going to bleach and until it's smoky. Mm. No. Okay. Just, so look at that. Very mm, looks good, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Our handwork. Eh? Ooh. Uh, hand <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I chop tomatoes. It's very fine. Thank you so much. So, we have our oil on fire. Okay. We heat this a little. If I say chop on your snap, please don't cry. You. Sorry. <laughs> what have I done to this, <laughs> this morning? So Just how do you the want onions. the onions chopped? As pretty chopped as this Or like fine, no, like no, round chopped. or Okay, maybe like half moon. Into two then. Into two and then you this. chop. Okay. Hmm. That's Anyways, this is <laughs> one recipe that I think you should try out. Are the kids going to love this? Bitter leaf, I mm, don't, don't think so. so because <laughs> even ordinary just ugu, yeah, still you know finding it difficult, exactly. right? So with bitter leaf, <laughs> no, but um, <laughs> right, I am, I, 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 I don't I, cope with this first, <laughs> right? <laughs> Ooh, so, and bitter leaves are very, very healthy. They are um, very, very healthy, and they also help to boost your immune system. Yeah. And also, if you have malaria, it's also very good. Yes. Yes, it helps to, you know, treat yes. that as well. But then don't overcook it. It's not supposed to be overcooked. Just, um, you just know... Just parboil. Yeah. It must just, boil anyway. Yeah. yeah. That's Great. Right. Okay, guys, uh, we're getting things ready here in the kitchen. Our palm oil is almost ready, yes. right? So we're going to toss in our onions. Oh, yes, and okay. then what's going in next quickly? Tomatoes, pepper, okay. Then and the then and then the bitter leaf goes last. in last. Yes. And then our crayfish, and we are ready. Breakfast <laughs> is ready, and we're going to serve, and we're going to eat. Mm, pretty excited. I hope you are as well. We'll have to go on a quick break now, people. It's the top of the hour, guys. Stay with us. We have so much packed coming up next. Welcome to the second hour of the best breakfast show with actual breakfast. Yep, <laughs> bitter leaf sauce. I'm looking forward to how that one looks like. I'm not so much of a fan of bitter leaf, but hey, come on, it's good to have you back for another level of fun and entertainment this Thursday on the show. Oh yes, and I can't wait to be part of it all. I mean, same here, here right? same here, same <laughs> here. Of course, uh, the kitchen is bubbling. Uh, Chef Belinda is cooking bitter <laughs> leaf <laughs> sauce. That is something that has never, uh, that has never been really done good. here. I don't think it has ever. A leaf sauce. Mm. We're only used to the soup, but here we are um, having it as a sauce. I can't wait to see how this turns out. Um, so our fish, our roasted fish is ready. It just came out of the um, what air, fryer. air fryer. <laughs> right, I was trying to remember what it's called again. Mm. The air fryer, properly roast. Ooh, wow. That's a lot of roasting that went on <laughs> there. And uh, yeah, things are coming on really nicely here in the kitchen. Oh, look at that. Our tomatoes are going mm. into the already fried palm oil. <laughs> Oh, that looks oh, no, good. Yeah, man. <laughs> that looks good, right? Oh, so, my, does that remind you of Scubia? <laughs> Scubia. Scubia. Sea oh, fish. <laughs> I mean, let's take that shot again. Take that shot again. Please, director, let's see that. My eye are not seeing where. <laughs> Let me see now, director. It's not fair. Let's Please. see that thing again. We, we cover our fish in the blood of Jesus. Mike is not coming here. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> that, is, that is our shot of today. <laughs> Yay! Ah, uh, look at the tomatoes. Yay. Ooh, that looks uh -uh. lovely. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> Dipped in palm oil and onions. Well done, Chef Belinda. Yeah, well done. They, we, have, we have increased your KPI. Director, no KPI for you. <laughs> it's fish, I say you should tell. Yeah, to forgot to. We but have yeah. so much more still Come coming on. up right Definitely. here in the next um, 45 minutes. And uh, my name is Winfrey Agbaleshi. Mike Mesikeno is mine. Of course, uh, the show is live on Go TV, yes. Channel 16, and on the ultra high frequency terrestrial band, it's 49. <laughs> Like Mike. <laughs> <laughs> hey. uh -huh. You can also stream the show live at TVC Entertainment.tv <gasps> on YouTube and of course on Facebook and mm. TVC Connect. Yep, yeah, the app is available, Android, iOS. Yes. You can watch us anywhere around the world. <laughs> Let's get straight into what we have for the rest of this morning. Book chat yes. is up. Mm -hmm. And we'll be reviewing a special piece. Uh, stick around, of course, uh, for that review. Thank you for staying with us. And right now we have a conversation with Valerie Ehime. 
a Yoruba, I say Yoruba babe. She definitely is a technical programs manager and she is in Nigeria to actually kick off and launch her non-profit organization. And the focus of the non-profit is to provide tech education to female students in public schools. Thank you and welcome to Wake Up Nigeria. Thank you so much so, for having me. Oh, you're welcome. So now I was about to tell you of how other girls are, you know, soft like that. Yes. <laughs> and of course, beautiful as well. Thank you. And all of that. So now tell me about your non-profit. Absolutely. So my non-profit, what we do is we provide tech education and computer science education to young girls in public schools here in Lagos, Nigeria. We know there's a need for it. Yeah. We know that um, our public school education sometimes lacks computer science education. And tech is really the new wave. There's just so many opportunities that young girls could have in tech. Yes. And so my nonprofit goes into public schools and at no cost to oh, the girl amazing. child, we provide them with computer science female teachers okay. and we teach them the basics of computer science, coding, programming, oh, and we talk about how to use technology mm -hmm. to solve problems mm -hmm. in their communities and how they can actually fix it with technology. Oh, beautiful. So now yes. I noticed you actually said female yes. teachers. Yes. There's a reason for that. 100%, 100%. As I was growing up and yeah. as I was in school, I rarely, rarely, rarely saw computer science teachers, mm -hmm. technical teachers who were women just like myself. Okay. So I believe that it is imperative and very important that the people who are serving as the role models mm -hmm. for our young girls, mm -hmm. the people who are teaching our young girls how to code, yes. teaching our young girls engineering, they are women just like you and I. Yes, yes of course. So, so they, they can they, see, they themselves. see themselves. 100%. Totally understand. So now tell me about your background. Yeah. I mean, so, so where did you fall in love with tech? And when did you realize this is what you want to do? Absolutely. So I grew up here in Lagos, right? Like, as I was going through school, secondary mm. school here, mm. I found that I really liked math. I liked mm. for the math. Okay. <laughs> And so as I completed my um, bachelor's degree um, in computer science abroad, and then I got my master's in systems engineering abroad as well, um, you know, I just kind of saw that I really enjoyed what I do. I enjoy solving problems with math. I enjoy solving problems with technology. Mm -hmm. As I was going through college and I began taking computer science classes, I saw that I really enjoyed what I was doing. Yeah. Um, I didn't see a lot of other young women who looked just like me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to change that. Mm -hmm. I want a world where when a young girl visualizes or sees who a computer scientist is, she sees somebody who looks just like her. Who looks just like her. Amazing. Make, it, make, it makes a lot of sense. Because I was actually going to ask, I mean, why did you decide to come back to Nigeria? Because yeah. you do it anywhere else. Absolutely. Yeah. It's Nigeria. Nigeria is it's home. Nigeria, yeah. I grew up I love Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, there's a need for it here. Yeah. There's a need for, um, you know, education to be improved mm -hmm. here in Nigeria. The world is moving very fast. Mm -hmm. Tech is moving the world very fast. Is, and I do not is. want Africa, I don't want Nigeria, I don't want our young girls to be left behind. Yes, makes sense. Okay, so now a lot of people will argue that, I mean, there's a lot of great things about tech, of course, based on what you're doing. But then mm -hmm. again, so people, our parents are struggling with the balance. So we can find balancing the bad and the good. So now, what would you say in your words, even talking to these girls? Because of course, we have to tell them and expose them to the fact that they're good side and they're bad side. Absolutely. How would you say you curb the bad side. Absolutely. I would say that um, people can use any tool to, to do good or bad, including tech. But I think that parents should set boundaries around the time and access that their kids have to their computers and their laptops. Parents, I acknowledge and I understand that parents can be concerned about that, yeah. but it's absolutely important that we allow kids to learn this mm -hmm. and be creative with this, mm -hmm. but absolutely set boundaries to ensure that you are seeing what your kids are working on, you understand what they're working on as well, perhaps even time boundaries as well, so that they have time for other things as okay, well. Okay, amazing. So you spoke mm -hmm. about how the launch was last week. Now. Yes! So how did that go? That went amazingly well. <laughs> um, we were very excited for it. Yeah. Um, we were able to go into the public school Okay. Launch the program. Mm -hmm. We gave the students a baseline exam to see mm -hmm. what they know. We just yeah. want to know what they know How already. Did that turn out? It went pretty okay. okay. They know some things, know but some things. there's a lot to learn as well. Yeah. And so the goal is that at the end of the term, mm -hmm. we're going to give them that same baseline exam. Mm -hmm. So we see that after teaching them for the duration of the term, we want to see mm -hmm. the increase in scores okay. at the very end. Okay. Okay. So the launch last week was really good. After the baseline exam, we talked to the students. I gave an intro to all of them. Mm -hmm. um, a month or so prior, we sent a consent form to all the students in the in GS1 class okay. to have their parents, you know, consent to them being a part of this yeah. program. And we had over 145 girls really? come back with their approval. Oh. So that was very encouraging to see. Nice. And we had these same students show up for our launch, yeah. which is amazing. And so we had, you know, all our teachers come in as well. 
execute the baseline exam and um, do an intro to the course. Okay. And now we are starting to teach the students once a week, every Wednesday. Okay. And, you know, we're able to, my co-founder and I, uh, my friend and I founded this organization mm -hmm. and we um, were able to fund it ourselves. However, you know, for us to scale up, for us to provide even more computers for the young girls. Mm. Computer science has to be taught in a very hands-on way. Very it can't just be theoretical. Yes. And so, you know, we're hoping that we can continue to get more resources so we can procure even more computers for the mm. girls so that it's one computer per student. It's amazing. Okay, so now the model of teaching, what's mm -hmm. the mode of teaching? Mm -hmm. So it's more how you, okay, once a week, right? So it goes into the classes and then what happens? More of online stuff. I mean, in class, in the classrooms of the schools, of public schools, mm -hmm. or is it a def different center? Mm -hmm. for that? Mm -hmm. So yes, it is once a week, every Wednesday mm -hmm. for a one-hour uh, time period, and the teachers go into the school to go teach the students in their own classroom, oh, okay. and the teachers bring in the resources mm -hmm. like the computers mm -hmm. into the classrooms mm -hmm. so that they teach with the computer, mm -hmm. they use the board, mm -hmm. and they use the computer mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. and they give the students the opportunity to also get hands-on experience using the computer, doing yeah. the classwork on the computer yeah. as well. And then again, what would you like it to be like? Oh doing? my goodness, <laughs> yes, we, we, we're starting with what we can right now, yes. but we definitely want to scale up yeah. and do more. Mm -hmm. I want there to be one computer per child mm -hmm. so that it's you know we we grow from group work yes. to where each student has the ability to work through their classwork at the same time mm -hmm. with every other student mm -hmm. so that's what mm -hmm. i want a of computer course, per student and more about, teachers yes a center a computer center that would be that. amazing yes students come in amazing i think you're doing amazing work thank and you and i'll say well done and of course for this great work you definitely will have resources coming in no time at all i Let's appreciate keep it up. that i love your set of teeth very white thank you <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> and that's all we're taking on this interview but so much more to come right here on wake up nigeria stay tuned we are back. Thanks for staying with us. You know, every Thursday we bring you everything in form of arts. And right now we are about to review our book. And um, with us is, um, we have with us um, Mrs. Adebisi Aden, Princess Adebisi Adeniji, and of course Mr. Steve Olu Bolahon Koko. So they wrote this book, The Real First church it's a compendium of facts and history as to which is the actual first built christian church in nigeria so this book basically has all the historical facts of the first church that was built in nigeria you are welcome to the show thank you very much thank thanks for being here ma thank you yes ma um so first off ma i would like to ask you what inspired you to write this book Thank you very much. You know, the book was, I mean, was written to, just to commemorate my 70th birthday. Oh, okay. In December 2029. The church I wrote the book about was built in 1839. Yes, ma'am. Whereas the church, the Anglican church in Abelkuta mm. was built in 1842. Mm. You know, there is a gap of good four years. And then um, probably because this book, I mean, the first church was built by an African, a Nigerian, and a Guman. Probably that was why it was hidden. And another, there is another church in Badagri. Badagri, yes. That's one. Which, according to the books, it is the first. First. Um, it isn't. Yes. It isn't the first. Mm. That one too was built in 1842 42. in December. Mm. The Abekutsa church was built just three months ahead, you know, September to December. Mm. So September comes first. Yes, ma'am. That is why the Egba people are claiming That's the first church. Mm. But this one was built in 1839. Four years. So it was important to bring this knowledge to, to the, the people, for people to book. know mm -hmm. that there is a church hidden somewhere in a very remote village. village. Does this church still exist? Very well. And people still attend very well. church? Very well. Yes. Great. Um, so first off, you we talked about here, Onashokum. Onoshokum. 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 Thank you, ma. <laughs> Administrator and envoy of the Oyo Empire, Empire. in the Dahomey province. Yes. So we already had a movie that was released late last year mm -hmm. that sort of gave us a glimpse of the Dahomey 
people. Okay. And here you, you sort of, you know, broke it down mm -hmm. and you explained quite a lot about the Onoshoku oh, sure. and his, um, um, his marriage to his Egun wife yeah. and how all of that went. So I, this question will go to you, yeah. sir. Kindly tell us more about Onoshoku. Okay. When I was watching the movie you just referred to, yes. the, the Woman King, the woman King. Yeah. I, I, I was getting some nostalgia oh, really? concerning nice. our work. Okay. And uh, the, the story of the Woman King mm. is very related to, to the this. story of yes, this it book. Is. Okay, so that movie mm. gives credence to the fact that, yes, in those days, the pre-colonial days, mm. the Oyo Empire encroached into Daomi land. Yes. The Egun people were being governed by de facto rulers from the Oyo Empire. Mm. Now, it so happens that my ancestor, or my, from my mother, um, happened to be the one sent from the Oyo Empire to administer the Ogo province. Mm. It was more like colonialism yeah. before the European before the, scale. Yeah. We had our system, mm -hmm. we, had, we had our government, we had our empires, we had the way we expanded, mm. we had our culture. And um, so what happened then was that Onoshoku was a prince from Oyo sent to oversee that area mm -hmm. and that was how he settled there mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm. His descendants continued mm. with that title until the colonialists came mm. and, and wiped, wiped out, out yeah. that history. Yeah. Now, we don't want the history to be wiped out. Mm. And, and that's why it's in this uh, book as well. And that's why we have written all the yeah. details in the book. So now, quickly, um, because we are still talking about Prince Onoshokun, right? Yes. The question now is, he's, is he really the first native Christian missionary in Nigeria? Okay, l l let me take that. It is not Onoshokun that is the native missionary. Okay. It is his son. Okay. Sorting. That was from the Egun, from his marriage to the Yes. yes. Egun. The product. The product. The product. From the marriage, marriage between Onoshokun and, and, and the Egun woman. woman. Exactly. So, sorting is the guy okay. who met Batch Freeman. Everybody know Batch Batch Freeman, Freeman, Batch Freeman in history. Yes. He was a British preacher yes. that was introduced one of the pioneers of Christianity yes. across, across the, the West world. African yes. coastline. Okay? So when he arrived at uh, Port Novo mm, back then, back then yeah. he met with Sotin. Is it me or she now? <laughs> <laughs> she met with our ancestor. Okay. The Sotin guy now. Yes. Sotin is the son of Onoshoku. Mm. Okay. Onoshoku is in the history because he's the one that came, came direct from, from Oyo yeah. to administer yes. the area. So we get the story now. Yeah. So Bad Freeman met with Sotin mm -hmm. and uh, for some reason the people didn't accept Christianity. Yes, they had to I flee. Think, mm -hmm. So Sotin as a friend, they had became friends. Mm. And uh, Sotim gave him refuge at our village, Itoho. Okay? So he gave him refuge at Toho. They stayed there a bit. And at that time, Batfima must have administered Christianity to Sotim. To Sotim. Okay? So Batfima, not long after that, mm. left for Ghana. Mm. So all the history the Europeans gave yeah. us was about Batfima's work at and Ghana. In Ghana, not in Nigeria. He later came to Nigeria in 1842 mm -hmm. when they called for, like, what they call in Christianity, the Macedonia call. Some slaves came in mm -hmm. and they wanted Christianity. Christianity yeah. They wrote a letter. Mm -hmm. Then in the British people now said, okay, but Freeman is in Ghana, send him down to Badagri. Mm. So that happened again three years after in 1842. But he first landed at Toho, Toho, Toho. when he fled um, Port Novo. Okay. okay. As the people of Port Novo, they did not accept him. Mm. They drove him, you know, it was, that was, the certain gave him refuge. You know, okay, let me take you to a safer place. Mm. Then he, you know, he introduced Christianity to him. I think as soon as the church building started, he mm. left immediately mm. and went to Ghana. Now let's talk about the, um, Met the first Methodist church that was, you know, that was built in Badagri in 1842. Yeah. Mama, thank you very much. This. You know, I, I um, Bajfima 
knew that he had somewhere where he could find refuge yes. in Itoho. So he went back to Tohon. Mm -hmm. He and the uh, Sotin, they went, they went together mm. to, to the site of this present Methodist, Methodist Church, Church. So, uh, Badagri. in Badagri. That, that one that was built in 1842. Mm. They went there together to lay the foundation. You know, some people from Lagos Island, some people went okay. with them too. So they laid the foundation. Mm. Then uh, Batrima stayed with them a little bit. Okay. I think that is the reason they now want to showcase that church mm. as the first, as the first Methodist, church, Methodist church, which is not true. Mm. The real one is in Tohon that was built in 18. Nine. Okay. Um, here you also highlighted so much about Thomas Thomas Bert Freeman. Yes, I mean, it's as if you all went deep into his life. You mm. talked about, you know, his personal life. Mm. You talked about the financial issues that he experienced. Quickly to run through that um, to us. Yeah, I'm glad you did your research very well. On the book. <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy about that. Thank you. Uh, you see, the whole story of this book could just have been one page. Mm. All we wanted to tell the world that the church built in Abekuta in September 1842 it's is the not okay. the okay. actual first church in Nigeria. Okay. The actual first church on the shores of Nigeria mm. within the boundaries and borders of Nigeria mm. was built in 1839 in my mother's village, Toho. So. That is all that needed to be said. Mm -hmm. So how do I write a whole book mm. saying this statement just I just said? Mm. So we had to delve, delve into, into Thomas the story Bertram's of Bart Freeman, the story of my great-great-grandfather, mm. the story of the Oyo Empire, how mm. they governed this, and all of that. So Bart Freeman was a British missionary mm. that was very passionate about Africa because mm. I think one of his parents was African. His father was an African slave in Britain. You know what? Yeah. There's so much to learn about Thomas Birch Freeman that yes. I don't think we have enough time Fine. because there was so much he said here in the book, and yeah. I think people need to go and buy the book yes. if you want to learn more about Thomas Birch Freeman, the first um, African church that was built here in Nigeria, and um, of course more about um, the Itonhan. Itonhan. Uh -huh. Itonhan. Uh -huh. Yes, people, <laughs> thank you so much for you know, coming on the show today and for sharing this with us. We appreciate this. Thank you, Thank you so much. much. All right, people. You just saw her perform live and of course, uh, putting that wonderful video out there. Beke is her name, a Nigerian American Afrofusion and R&B singer, songwriter, uh, who of course uh, combines Afrobeat, new soul and the plethora of alte, is the alte they call it, alternative rhythms and all of that. It's great to have you. You, Thank you are welcome. Thank you so much. Seems you have, it's quite an eclectic mix. There's quite a lot into your sound. How did that sound develop? Yes. Um, so the sound really developed um, when I was a kid. Mm. Uh, my dad used to listen to a lot of oldies music, um, like Michael Jackson, Janet mm. Jackson, the likes. Mm. And um, of course, with my heritage being Nigerian, my mom used to play a lot of Sunny Ade and um, fella and the likes. So mm. as I grew older, um, I was able to um, figure out how to mesh that sound together. Mm. So you're, 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 it's, it's, it's a family that is in tune with music and all of that. Yes. Did they always support you? Did, they, or did you always know from a kid that you were going to be a professional singer? From a young age, I knew. <laughs> but of course, being Nigerian, I knew school came first. Mm. So um, I made sure that I got my master's in business. And mm. once I did that, I had the full support of my family. Are you doing anything with that degree now? Business and all that otherwise? Are you do, what, what are you doing with it? Yes, so I work full time as a program manager to support myself as a musician. Wonderful, wonderful. But then when did you get into music professionally? Um, that was back in 2017. Mm. That's when I put out my first single. Mm. And since then, how's it been up until now? How's the reception? Because now you, you shuttle between the US and Nigeria, yes. families here and all of that. So that means that somewhere or the other, you've seen how music is um, sampled or how it is received in different climes. Yes. Yeah? Let's, let, let's, let's juxtapose, let's look at it. How, how, how has the reception to Afro, and Afrobeat has really moved. Yes. It's the in thing now. I mean, I, I see that when I see all the Selena Gomez's, the 
Camilla, Camilla trying to, I feel like they, okay, they want to get into the in thing now, so they are yes. trying to get features on Afrobeats and all of that. But uh, I just want to, by your own reason, how, 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 how is the reception to Afrobeats? And then you're doing soul also, so there's quite a lot in you. How is, how is your music received over there? Yes, so uh, my music is received super well. Um, I do weekly open mics and they Ooh. love my music. They love Afrobeats back home. I'm from Arizona. Mm. Um, there aren't too many Nigerians back there, but even like black Americans, white people, they really appreciate Afrobeats back mm. home. Um, and I think it's just really beautiful and inspiring how Afrobeats has taken over the globe. It has, it has. Yes. And, and, you know, it has. It's really, really, really inspiring. But back here with us now, this are your people and all of that. Yes. How do you compare? How, do, how is it received here? as compared to there. Yes, so I believe that R&B is a budding market in mm. Nigeria. Um, Afrobeats is very, um, it's very um, vast in yeah. the sense that it's, it doesn't just comprise of Afrobeat. There's so much that goes into it. Mm. Um, so it's received pretty well here as, as well. So if there was an underlying theme to Becca as an artist, what would you say is that theme that maybe cuts a thread across all your music. What, what, what would you say is the essence of Beke? So the ens essence of Beke is to encourage and inspire others. Mm. Um, I talk a lot about self-confidence and self-love in I my like music, that. and I really just want to spread love across like the that. world. Because now, with, even with the advent and the blowing of Afrobeat, as it were, uh, there was this Jamaican superstar who claimed that, okay, yo, Afrobeat is all about the rhythm, the move. The, there's not so much lyrical yeah. value, lyrical content. I, we, we don't mind. We just want our time. We just want to enjoy all of that. Right. But have you ever had that thing where you're trying to balance between um, rhythm or, and sound and, you know, melody and then lyrics? Because, you know, sometimes people just want to, oh, let's just shake, shake your body. Uh, 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 let's just move to the rhythm. Have you ever found, have you, has there ever been a place where you're trying to, you know, maybe find a balance, trying to put a message into Afrobeat and, you know, but at the same time, people just want to listen to, to move, to melody and move and all of that. Has that ever happened to you? Yes, it has. Um, and honestly, that's been my journey in Afrobeats so mm. far, mm. Uh, being able to convey a message, but also make sure that I'm keeping the melody, keeping the rhythm and keeping people engaged in the Wonderful. music. How far do we expect to take this? Five years, 10 years, would you ever do music full time if the opportunity arises? Definitely. My passion is music and um, I'll go for as long as I possibly can. Mm. All right. This is uh, uh, wishing you the best here, Beke, and we're saying that, uh, see you at the top. Yeah. Thank uh, you so all, much. Wish all your dreams come true. And Amen. Someday, we'll see you at the biggest stages. Thank you. All right. Oh, nice. Welcome to the kitchen, Beke. <laughs> Thank you. And this is Chef Belinda. This morning, she's made for you boiled yam with plantains and bitter leaf sauce. Mm -hmm. mm. Yummy. <laughs> Yummy, right? <laughs> yes. Great. OK, so um, we can't wait for you to dig in and let us know what you think. So I'll just move this quickly. Thank you. All right, here you go. Enjoy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well done, Chef Belinda. Thank that you. looks really colorful. It looks good. I feel proud because I, I was a part of this. <laughs> Abby. You know. Abby, yeah. So let us know. Mm, nice. Mm. Oh, OK. <laughs> the mouth hits. full. <laughs> Okay, sorry. <laughs> that mouth is full. We just, you know, we already can, you know. Well, you gave it a thumbs up, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You did. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much, Becky. Thank you for being Thank on the you. show. And like I said, wishing you the best. Yes, I love your music. Thank you.